Thank you for taking some time here and uh, joining the podcast in Vancouver, Canada. No problem. So it's like four o'clock there. It's four o'clock. Yeah. Look at your background. Is awesome. What is like? What is going on in this room? Oh, this is where I shoot my YouTube content. This freaking rules. <laughs> so many things that i change it up every once in a while that's rad yeah uh okay so i want to rip through the stuff that like because i was you know obviously doing a little bit of digging to find out who you are and what you're all mm -hmm, about mm -hmm, and all mm -hmm. that but so you just mentioned the youtuber but you're uh you're the host of a of it's not therapy yeah analyst yeah game developer, I, and i'm a peer counselor in uh conjunction with it's not therapy wow so yeah. what what eats up most of your time? Like, well, what is your, what does a typical day look like for you? Well, Wednesday, Thursday are client days. And then Monday is the show. Okay. And then Tuesdays I do Twitch and Fridays are sort of the catch up day for the week. Wow. And so what yeah. do you like best? Oh God. You know what? I'm one of those people that need the change. <clears throat> so yeah. it's, I mean, the, the mental health stuff is obviously really rewarding. But it can be, I mean, this week there was somebody who almost broke up in the long-term relationship. Somebody's mother died, you know, all, all the stuff. And so having the other things like playing Yakuza Kiwami 2 in the same <laughs> week I'm doing that for people is awesome, yeah. right? I, yeah. I would imagine like for the therapy side of, of things, like how hard is it for you to not get so caught up in their world that it, like not to be a dick, but it it's drags a, you down it's it, it's a learned skill right to sort of put it away it's like yeah. the samwise gamji thing i can't carry it for you mr frodo but i can carry you right right and I'll, there's a principle i can talk about this on the show if you want there's a principle called the dignity of risk oh we're already this is, we're already doing the show oh hello okay <laughs> so um uh principle called dignity of risk that um uh it's ultimately up to the client to decide what they want to do what direction they want to go and because it's ultimately their choice mm. you know you go over it with them but these are adults i don't work with youth i don't work with kids so these are adults they make their own choices and you know stuff can get tough but like anything resilience is a skill and if i didn't have it i'd be a really lousy example for other people right mm -hmm. So it's a matter of, uh, you know, if you don't want it, you're you're not going to get it, even if somebody throws it in your face kind of thing. Well, I mean, every so often, obviously, something hits you. You're human, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm really, really big on boundaries. I went through my own experiences with trauma therapy back in 2012, 2013. And that's one of the things they set, like boundaries, right? And that's a big one you don't let someone push you off your equilibrium mm -hmm. and somebody's like well sometimes it happens yeah sometimes it happens and that's where the self-compassion component comes in if i start feeling myself walking around carrying somebody else's stuff it's like all right that's my responsibility let's cut that out this isn't this isn't my life right mm -hmm. there's a humility element of I don't know. It's kind of arrogant to think you're you're responsible for somebody else's life because while that may be carrying some of the burden for them, it's also removing any credit they get from the equation. I don't even say I'm helping people. I say I'm providing tools. Mm -hmm. And so what is it you're hoping that people who listen to It's Not Therapy will walk away with? The mental health doesn't have to suck. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but it doesn't have to be you know the past i don't know if you've ever been in a therapist office but that faded pastel paint that looks like pepto-bismol and the floral kleenex box and that very like i'm a loser vibe and therapy is really important for people who have it but i call what i do emotional nutrition so therapy is medicine what I do is mental health nutrition. And if you don't do, you know, the diet, exercise, get enough sleep, no doctor in the world can help you. Mm. That's where I come in. It's sort of like personal training and nutrition for your your mental health and well-being. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you probably get a, a, a ton, you know, with all the stuff that you do, if you could only do one thing, because I'm sure they, they must fulfill in different ways, which, like, what would you do if you could only do one thing? 
I, I, oh God, I probably do that, but they all, they all tie together. Right. Because the, it's not therapy concept came out of the fact that my Twitch streams were becoming group therapy sessions. Mm. And I was getting a little concerned about the amount of personal information people were divulging in a public forum. So I'm sure. like, let's try it. I did peer counseling back in the day when I was still in school. Let's see if we can do a reasonable fee. You know, I started off at $25 is now up to 40, but that's a lot cheaper than a therapist. And let's see if it works. Right. And it, it did. We've got people getting, you know, things they can use for a session. And then, you know, they're making gains, substantial gains uh, in weeks and months, not years and decades. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so getting into the the game developer side mm -hmm. of, of what you do, what's your first memory of video games? Uh, I was three years old and I wanted to play Pac-Man, right? Which I called Bucka Bucka. <laughs> yeah, and bucka, coin op bucka. machines yeah i'm dating myself now but coin operated video game machines were magic but i couldn't reach i couldn't even climb up on those stools they had in the arcade so my mother used to lift me up uh so she gets all the blame and all the credit for my video game obsession uh and so i i could i could play pac-man and you know chuck e cheese it shared a mall back in the day magic just the best and to this day i love those you know those glass top table oh yeah player? i love those it's i could reach those on my own right those you, i could do <laughs> what do you have in, do you have those you said or you want to have no them? they're like three grand for yeah. a reproduction i'd love one but you got to maintain those too yeah big time well don't they have them now where they have like the you know 1200 games or whatever some shit in it right yeah, they have those. That, like I said, the reproductions. And I'm a bit of a purist because those are, I'm going to drop a ton of technical terms. Those are old CRT okay. monitors and everything like that. They suck a ton of power oh. is the other problem, right? So my retro video game purist tendency, you see the Apple too in the background, right? Mm -hmm. uh, my purist tendencies are not exactly environmentally friendly. So it's like... <laughs> do I really need an ego piece? You, you see, there's a lot yeah. already. So I have the little, instead I have the little, um, I think it was made by uh, Coleco or something like that. The home game, yeah. turn it on next to the Pac-Man. That's, yeah. that's retro. And yeah, the Nintendo so, yeah. power glove and the ROB and all that it, stuff. So it had all that shit as a kid. Pizza. Like what was your, what was your house like as a kid growing up for all that? Like you started Atari and you went through ColecoVision and television and all that. See, I grew up in the Jane Finch part of Toronto. We didn't have a lot of money. Yeah. So we had an Atari, uh, we had an Atari. Um, we had a Sega, not a Nintendo. My friends had a Nintendo. Like, every like different kids in the neighborhood would have different systems totally right so one person had the uh um commodore 64 and i'd go over there and play this this is really nerdy a game called mule it was an early resource management game yeah. uh and then another friend had crystal castles which was the coolest thing uh what was it star girl one of the characters was playing crystal castles in one of the things and i was like what crystal castles i freaked right out and uh then somebody you know somebody else had nintendo for mario and i have very very strong memories of uh playing super mario brothers and listening to tarzan dan on am 680 mm. back in the day and dan's a friend of mine now so that's like that's, that's a cool. very very vivid memory from childhood yeah it, and then you know the playstation era happened and uh i actually missed a lot of the nintendo cults consoles because i went to pc gaming oh, so did I you? To, oh. yeah i had to go back and kind of uh catch up on gamecube but i mean the, the original playstation was a game changer with the polygon based 3d graphics and i mean that's what people think of gaming now but yeah. back in the day games were hard right there was no guarantee that you could complete them and yeah. I just got the Cowabunga collection, the Ninja Turtles thing, and went yeah, back cool. and played. It's like, oh yeah, this we did this for fun back then. Us Gen X kids were tough. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. 
and, and of course, uh, you know, behind this, well, not behind the scenes, of course, he's right standing beside you as a proud husband. But along the way, of course, you were married to mm-hmm. Stephen Kersner, who is mm-hmm. Ed the Sock. Mm-hmm. So how mm-hmm. did you meet him? And was it was it love at first sight? Or like, what was how did how did the relation start? start? It, I mean, it sort of was. I won't get into too many gory details, but we met at a, at a like the equivalent of a really lousy nightclub. He was doing live stuff and it just sort of happened both the working relationship and the you know the romantic one uh and uh you you were working together that's how you met him well he was doing club stuff and i actually like volunteered for six months uh with the uh, over a summer uh with the just for laughs festival and a few other things on the show uh, I have a dance background. I was a competitive dancer. So I originally went in trying to uh, up the production values on the the dancers in the show. And it was one of those things of, okay, well, I can do this and I can do this and I can do this. And I, I started writing and I built sets and because I'm a theater nerd as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and then we did like a switcheroo day just as a joke on one episode. Everybody sort of changed places. And so I did a, a co-hosting stint. And then when the previous host, Craig Campbell, left because his career took off as a stand-up in England, it was like, well, let's try something different. I was a gender swap before it was cool, right? <laughs> <laughs> with, with casting. But that one worked. Nice. Yeah. Uh, so, of course, you're known for, you know, creating content. And so i uh, curious when, like, when you find time, to, to actually sit in front of the, the tube or or whatever it is like what are you binge watching right now right now well i just finished uh catching up on doom patrol oh yeah that's such a good show i yeah. love that show uh cuphead on netflix because i played cuphead? the game and now watch the show oh yeah it's this How's old that? it's a 30s style cartoon based on a video game partially made out of oakville ontario it's uh you know like uh max the like um felix the cat classic mickey mouse classic yeah, yeah. warner brothers fleischer brothers uh superman cartoons it's that style cool. of animation and so it's it's two brothers cuphead and Mugman, who uh accidentally sell their souls to the devil at a carnival and it's these madcap adventures breaking their soul contract so you need a little bit of weed then I'm allergic to weed. <laughs> no way. Are you really? I, oh I'm God. super allergic to weed. How do you find out you're allergic to weed? Uh, being around it and having very, very bad things happen. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Nice. I'm resistant to morphine and allergic to weed. There's a reason I do this. I have no fun otherwise. <laughs> wow. And, and so looking in the background, and all, you, I mean, you're obviously you're a comic book geek too yeah people get mad at me because i have marvel and dc stuff mixed up in the, the background oh, but i don't judge. yeah marvel yeah. superior but you don't just dismiss well, DC. okay right? marvel extended content it used to be uh dc was better on tv marvel was better on um on and movies but the disney plus stuff has sort of changed that up we'll see when james gunn gets gets his chance to work his magic on dc but i mean i read he's now I, co-coo or ceo isn't he yeah now, yeah he, after, he's in a position to actually make change yeah they just unveiled his plans but it starts in like 2025 right right but i started okay, like, with what? Spider-Man. Like, why does it take so long like what well they got to develop it right it's starting like, from that's scratch like, it like that's it's a big risk right that making people wait that long because people are going to forget if the flash isn't a good movie if what's the oh aquaman he's going to wear that rightly or wrongly that's the unfortunate thing about media is everybody can consume it and there's no like degree in television reviewing so opinions are like you know assholes everybody's got one yeah yeah. and you you gotta sort of get used to that as you know i'm sure doing doing this show you just get some really unenlightened opinions oh yeah everything's welcome why not 
Yeah. And you were mentioning something. I, I cut you off there. Sorry about that. You were mentioning something about Spider Man. And oh, and I started with uh, Spider Man comics, but then oh. I went hardcore into DC for a while. Which is, I mean, the Spectres back there. Mm. I love the Spectre. Um, but yeah, I I like those like second stringer, third stringer mm. characters. I mean, I love Superman. I love well, less and less Batman. I love Wonder Woman, but stuff like you know Modok which I thought was never going to be adapted, but now he's in um, Ant-Man. He was in the Ant-Man trailer. Right. And then like Fin Fang Foom and the Spectre and like Guardians of the Galaxy, Moon Knight. Right. And yeah, like Doom Patrol. Were Guardians all of the Galaxy? Red. Like what? What they're making a Guardians of the Galaxy movie and then they crush with it? Like, And they changed a lot, but the time. changes were good, right? Yeah, big time. And yeah. did, what did you think of the, uh, or maybe you didn't see it? Did you this, this see the the Sandman? The Sandman was tough for me because it's hard to go back to things you loved as a teenager. Yeah, and so it was sort of like a you know a Freedom Fifty Five commercial of coming back to where I was at when I was like sixteen. Right. Now, so it was sort of like he's a jerk. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I love Gwendolyn Christie, so I watched for her. Yeah. She's um Lucifer. She's right. uh Brianne of Tarth, and then she's in Wednesday as well. Wednesday's fantastic. That's right. next up. Uh, that's next for us. We're it's just wrapping up uh, fantastic, yeah. Uh young Sheldon is what we're watching as a family. Okay. Right now. It's pretty yeah. funny. Yeah. The overall, it's pretty funny. And the and then Wednesday's the next, and it, and we're hearing nothing but like it is amazing. Yeah, Wednesday's great. I hope people don't oversell it for you because I went in cold yeah. and it was fantastic. I, I have this thing when something's overhyped. It's like that was really good and also extremely overrated. Totally. You like know? it can ruin stuff. Like it don't can. you you have to go in. Like it doesn't matter if you get good or bad reviews of something. Like nobody ever has your exact taste ever. I'm one of those people that when something's like three out of five or like 75 out of a hundred i tend to love those totally yeah, yeah I feel the same way yeah uh, back quick to the superpowers and all that superheroes which power would you want oh which power would i want i know right so many awesome powers yeah they all i mean I know I wouldn't want to be able to read minds because I hear what everybody's <laughs> thinking about me and it's like a constant like dream chat over and over and over again. Yeah. I don't know. It's tough. They're like cool ones, right? Like America Chavez's ability to punch the dimensions. That's pretty cool. Pretty rad. But, you know, at the same time, I, I was a big Poison Ivy fan back in the day, but how cool is growing vines? Really? You know? Mm. toxic toxic kisses i don't know post me too maybe problematic <laughs> martian manhunter's powers are pretty cool being able yeah. to phase through things yeah green, a green lantern ring would be awesome oh my god like the almost i don't know if you could beat it really well depending like you're, you're, on the weakness to different rings right different truly i mean you're like you're you're at the mercy of like your thoughts and yeah it's your imagination yeah, and like, i love how in the green lantern comic the different green lanterns have had different relationships with their rings like kyle rayner was an artist but uh john stewart was in the military and an architect so their powers are different that was yeah. awesome now I'm wondering what my Green Lantern projections would be. Those would be some pretty interesting constructs based on my background. <laughs> Big time. <laughs> Big time. Uh, okay, switch gears here to uh, music. What's what's it being played in your house as a kid when you're growing up? Oh, as a kid, uh, I got I was one of those kids that made fun, got made fun of for liking ABBA, and now ABBA's having this huge resurgence. So it's like Revenge so of the good. Music Nerd. Yeah, but. I was a competitive tap dancer, so jazz was big. Uh, I went through a big grunge phase at the same time I was watching, mm. reading Sandman, right? Yeah. Um, I was always on the periphery of the boy band thing. I went along with it because, you know, New Kids in the Block was the boy band when I was a kid. Right. Um, but then, you know, because of where I grew up, there's a lot of reggae, a lot of classic hip hop, like 90s hip hop has been really foundational for me. Right now, I'm on a big electro pop kick. Oh, 
uh sorry um no that's wrong um stuff like pavlov's uh pavrov stellar it's like old school swing music electro swing maybe it's called but okay. they put it to like a dance beat now it's awesome that's stuff cool. like yeah a, like, a, like a remix or whatever kind of almost. yeah yeah it it puts a sort of hitch on it it's really really sweet tunes that's fun and, and what was your first concert you went to oh geez it wasn't a boy band it probably was just because i'd be allowed to go right um it could have been new kids in the block i don't know that's sort of a haze because i was you know competitive dance and so it's like i can't remember going to all those things and then working at much music it all uh it all blurs together right yeah fair electro and swing is the genre of music i just looked it up oh nice okay yeah. Uh, and are you big in sports? Like you, you're, you're a big fan of the Leafs or anything like uh, that? Or I used to play days? basketball. So Raptors is what I watch more than anything when I have time. Yeah. I mean, I, I have I have the score update widget on my phone. I do do that. But, right. you know, right. I don't watch as much as I'd like to. Um, hockey, I, I, it's expensive to go to hockey. I know, Holy right? Holy shoot. Dude, it costs, I, I took me, my wife, my two kids parking a couple beers you know some popcorn and everything else about 700 yeah like holy shit you can't do that too many times in a season yeah i mean we got like the the marley's and things like that here if you want to go to like double a like junior hockey yeah that's good because then you can watch a game and and not break the bank and you know you're supporting local community as well and, and often in those leagues, you'll find that they're playing even harder because they want to make the bigs. So Canadian it's almost juniors, more exciting, yeah. right? Canadian yeah. juniors are good. Yeah. Yeah. They play big time. Yeah. 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 All right. I, I want to respect your time, Leanna. So I'll ask you a few more questions and, uh, and then we'll wrap it up. Okay. Uh, who's the most famous person you met and how'd you meet them? Oh, God. Define famous. I don't know. I mean, one of the coolest people I met was Edward James Almost. Oh, cool. He was awesome. He was the Great first actor. guy I ever heard that race was a social construct from. Mm. And at the time, like, what is this guy on? He's like, race isn't real. It's a, you know, it was a creation by, you know, the various colonial powers. And I went back and I looked it up. It's like, if Edward James Almost tells me something, I'm going to listen. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, he was... Mm -hmm. He was like a real presence. He's one of the ones I remember. Mm. Um, I'm trying to think of like big, big, big stuff. Mark Hamill's an amazing guy. Come on, you've met Mark Hamill? Oh, uh, Mark. I've oh been to Mark God. Hamill. Okay, I don't want to brag. This is so trashy. When we were doing the late night show, we interviewed Mark Hamill at his house. It was when episode one was about to come out. But Mark Hamill did a really good comic book called The Black Pearl. And so it was, we don't want to talk to you about Star Wars. We'll talk to you a little bit, but we want to talk about your comic book. He's like, yeah, okay, no problem. Yeah. And him and the late Stan Lee, nicest guys in the world. And they remember people. Oh my God. But like. Did Stan Lee too? Stan Lee was a very, very sweet man. Stan was a showman, <sighs> right? The thing that was killer about Mark Hamill is not only is he such a good voice actor that he sat with the cells production cells of the different characters he did just sat with them on his lap mm. dropped them like bob dylan flashcards, and just flipped through the voices and that is so hard to do but he is the chillest most humble guy he still gets excited by stuff he still loves other people's work and he he, he just he has no ego he has a great sense of humor about himself amazing yeah. Super oh my god, I would guy. be such a freaking spaz, like fanboy big time. He'd be like, this dude's gotta get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I, I'm I'm worse with game developers. Oh yeah. When I meet them, because it's you know, it's it's a professional thing. With actors, it's like I guess it's that callous you get because you gotta play it cool. Right. You know, yeah. I mean the the things that were heartbreaking is every musician I, I love that I met was a complete jerk. I won't name names, but the pop princesses that I wasn't the biggest fans of at first, nicest people. And so oh. I got a new 
appreciation for pop acts just because they weren't horrible i mean meeting the smashing pumpkins was a life destroying experience back in the day <laughs> they were mean to me oh, and oh, oh. and sometimes you know being a woman in in game development um people assume things and yeah. so i'm like please don't be mean to me please don't be mean to me i've had mostly good experiences or only a few i won't name names but only a few that have been real jerks most yeah. of them are pretty good and and really um really open to talking about what they do because they don't get to do it a lot mm -hmm. right so i mean there's so much talent in canada alone mm. right and on on so many prongs i mean so many of the the marvel actors are coming out of canada right and and people i think people don't realize that's acting but like imagine taking a character that someone out there loves right and having to embody that like i don't know how you convince someone that you are thor that's hard I, right never like mind I'm doing... like what oh my god i could see it tons of pressure yeah but i mean that's the same thing right it's like convince people that yeah. you're them and these guys are so good at it that now people can't see them as anything but that's a skill that is a skill yeah. agreed agreed yeah. uh liana tell us a near-death story you're like holy crap i could have just died i have a lot of those <laughs> uh i almost died of gangrene when i was 16 years old yeah my appendix ruptured and uh didn't they didn't get it till after it ruptured so the test didn't come back recognizable and i ended up in the hospital with like a tube down my nose but yeah oh, that yeah. was one uh another um i'm i'm blanking on them i mean another it turned it it turned out you know i was allergic to the chicken pox virus so i Ooh. broke out in massive hives that was awesome i'm forgetting some the minute i end this i'm gonna be oh, oh. yeah that other oh, time yeah. i almost died well that's why i ask because everybody has one yeah, yeah, I've had more than my share. I mean, the ginger thing is kind of <laughs> real. We have weird reactions to things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, How are you in the sun? How's your relationship with that guy? Bread for cold, dark places. <laughs> <Totally>. <laughs> <laughs> it's like hat and like wrapped up like Larry from Doom Patrol. Like, oh, yeah, so five minutes in yeah. July, I'll start getting pink. Yeah, yeah. All right, wrap it up. Last one. Um, career highlight <laughs> could oh, you pick man. could you pick it down to one i mean the the reaction to fromage was really uh we got no credit from it with for with from within much music but just you know producing something and putting together and being an integral part of something that people just connected to so strongly mm -hmm. was was pretty cool i mean retroactively it probably feels better than it did at the time because it was so exhausting but that's that's definitely it and then you know more recently just be, being able to contribute to the mental health space and mm -hmm. hearing people say you know your show it doesn't bs it doesn't sugarcoat it just gives people the real talk i mean those are two very extremely different rewarding experiences but you know every so often you get a message from somebody and they're like i was having a really hard time you made me laugh i was contemplating suicide i discovered your content it got me through that's yeah. you don't get paid for that especially in canada but i don't care what anybody says anybody who creates content on some level if they're not a narcissist sociopath that's the goal right because there are way easier ways to make money yeah totally yeah and, and so what's the easiest way for you know you know lds they can pick you up but we can get you here in, in oh, yeah North, uh right? wherever wherever you get your podcasts uh podbean is sort of populated but it's on spotify it's on apple it's on google it's it's not therapy sometimes you have to put in with leanna kersner but yeah you can subscribe to the podcast and get it that way i mean okay. you can listen you can listen via streaming but everything's passive now so it's better to sign up and get the notifications oh big time is there a website for you as well there well not therapyshow.com is there if you want to submit a question we're still building it 
because we want to do this like community thing. So we're doing it right. And we're we're trying to make sure all the back end is in so we don't break it after it's been up for two years. But yeah, yeah. that'll be up soon. If people do want to submit questions for the show, they can do it there, though. There's a contact form on nottherapyshow.com and not therapy show on Instagram, not therapy show on Twitter. I'm on TikTok, but I'm still learning, so I don't talk about it. <laughs> but just yeah, the dances. <laughs> well, it's more I'm trying to figure out how it works. I keep oh posting God. videos with no sound. I figured out how to put music over video of my cats, so Great. I feel like that's a, a, an achievement. Yeah. Like a nice cat channel, just one more cat channel that we all need, right? Well, on Instagram for the longest time, that's all I did. It was my cat pictures. I wasn't me. And then when Twitter started going, I'm like, oh, better get an Instagram. But I don't like it. Right. I actually like Twitter. I'm weird that way. I don't mind Twitter. So do you do you use your personal, the red Leon K, Leanna K on Twitter? Are you on very often? Oh, I'm on Twitter a lot just because this is an interesting story. I got called out by J.K. Rowling and got horrendously dogpiled and so i got pulled into the whole transgender debate and now uh i do a lot of signal boosting and and you know like informative posts trying to trying to insulate some people against the brain worms because that is that's one of those for me um kind of icebreaker issues that people don't know a lot and it's easy to it's easy to say things to people that sound like they make sense. They sound factual, but it's like that Stephen Colbert's truthiness thing. Yeah, yeah. So if I can help a few people, because I, I do sympathize with people who are like, no matter what I say, I get yelled at. Somebody's telling me I'm a bigot. I just want to know how I don't get yelled at. And I really sympathize. And so I try to you know, and, and keep it fun. And then I post a lot of pictures of like cat videos and chinchillas and ducks and little small animals. There's this um, translated cats is one of my favorite Twitter accounts. Mm -hmm. They're translating from things like Indonesian and Japanese and like Swahili and stuff, people's captions on cat pictures. And sometimes <laughs> they go horribly wrong. It's just fantastic. Awesome. Oh, excuse me. Thank you again for doing this tonight and uh, and hanging out with us for a little bit. Yeah, thanks for having me. This is fun. Uh, anything you'd like to 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 say to wrap things up, and we'll put a little bow on this one. Yeah, no, I mean, don't be shy. If people are if don't people are uh, Twitch fans, I stream six o'clock my time Tuesday nights, which is uh, three p.m. Um, yeah, time. Pacific time. If you want to come check that out, I'm playing through Yakuza Kwame 2 now. Um, but yeah, Twitter um, or yeah, send me an email, send me a message through the contact form on nottherapyshow.com. If you have a mental health question, um, it's not just about, oh, I have depression. Oh, I have anxiety. It's I'm an artist. How do I get my work published? Right. I'm a content creator. How do I get started? Half mm -hmm. half my practice is uh, artist management and like career coaching. So yeah, anybody who feels sort of stuck needs a boost. Send me a message. Very cool. Sounds like you have a very very busy life. I like it that way. It's, it feels familiar. Yeah. <laughs> <Very simple. laughs> yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, say hi to Stephen for me, uh, and I guess we'll see you online. Yes. Great. Thanks nice, so much. Nice okay. chat. Have a great night.